Welcome, Killtech here. What I want to show in this guide is for beginners and alpha clones, uh, how you could possibly fit a nice level 1 mission uh, ship, and how to think and skill uh, for future to get into bigger ships. So, level 1 ship fitting. Um, actually, you can find a lot of useful uh, fit fittings on uni uh, UniWiki. Uh, that's a great resource for beginners. Uh, but I want to show something else. And what I want to show you guys is to use the new simulator mode in EVE Online. That's a great way to test out builds and see the result. So let's just enter simulate mode. And what I go, I'm gonna uh, show you is actually a different approach. I want you guys uh, to think first before you uh, decide to do anything. Um, I'm using Minmata, the character right now. So let me get uh, to Minmata frigates. <clears throat> so. Now we have the frigates of the Minmatars, and you can see in the overview and in, in the uh, regional market uh, what traits those ships have. As you can see, the breacher has a um, rate of fire bonus on light missiles, on rocket, and a bonus on shield booster amount. The burst uh, is good in healing other ships, we don't need that right now. Probe is good at uh, scanning down. And uh, Relic and Data Analyzer Virus Strength, we don't need that uh, either. The Rifter is good uh, because it increases small projectile turret damage and uh, increases uh, fall off by 10% per level, that's good also. And the Slasher uh, increases uh, damage also and small project turret tracking speed. As you can see, we have a lot of great options for Minmata race and uh, all the other races have great options too. But what I wanted to say is, um, you don't have to listen to other people, uh, which will say you maybe uh, that the Rifter is the best. Best, it probably is the best. But um, what I want you to do is uh, make it work for yourself. A lot of the fittings uh, have personal uh, preferences in them, so I'm just going to show you my approach of building and fitting ships. So that you can maybe uh, get a better insight how other people do it and decide for yourself what you like. F I, for my instance, like the Breacher. I like the Slasher very much. I like the Rifter. The Rifter is fun to fly, okay? But I don't like his looks so much. The Slasher, the redesign looks amazing. I would love to fly this ship. The re Breacher, I don't know, I always liked this piece of crap. I don't know why, but I like it, okay? So I'm gonna going to do uh, two approaches on uh, the Slasher and the Breacher. So let's just dive right into the Slasher, yes. What you do is you go, you go to Hulls and Fits. Then you pick your frigate of choice, that would be my slasher right here. So now, now I have a naked slasher to work with. Then I go to hardware. So what I want to do now is, I can see I have three turret hardpoints, no missile hardpoints. I have four high slots, four mid slots and two low slots. And I see that this ship uh, has more shield capacity than, capacity than armor and I actually want to go shield because I have something else in mind when fitting the ship I don't want to go too close to enemies because travel time costs time what I want to do is I want to use um, long range weapons so if I go to projectile turrets and go to artil uh, artillery cannons you can see we have the small ones here and what I want to show you is building the fitting around an idea. What I want to do and accomplish with this uh, frigate is 
doing a lot of damage with long range weapons to finish the missions faster. I don't want to close in with an afterburner, get close, kill them, go to the next enemy, go to the next enemy and do that uh, over and over. What I want to do is come in inside, come into a site, kill everyone with long range weapons and leave right away. So I'm cutting on time. I'm also not interested in the wrecks and the salvage uh, because I it's not that much worth it and if you are faster with doing the missions then you can get still a good amount of money out of it so okay let's see as you can see we have uh, 250 uh, millimeter uh, weapons and 280 and because I want to do a lot of damage I'm going to use the 218 and for this I'm going to open all those guys and as you can see let me just put them a little bit to the sides Maybe a little help to uh, what to look for is you see a meta level of the item and as, as you can see I already uh, ordered them by meta level. We have level 1, level 2, level 3 and level 4 and actually um, increased meta level items should be better. So let's let's watch them. We have uh, capacity, volume is same on all, reload time is same. Accuracy fall off is the same, turret tracking is the same, rate of fire is the same, and now you see optimal range. Optimal range is increasing with uh, meta level 4, the, the highest. And damage modifier, is, uh, da damage modifier is also increasing. So that means our 280mm scout artillery uh, is, is doing the, the, the biggest bang out of them. So I would be interested in this one and maybe this one and as we can see this has lower requirements in fitting and those two are actually hit this one is the same or lower this one is bigger so I don't want them at all and those one that uh, carbine hobbies I don't want that either so I'm left with these two options let's see Scout artillery is worth estimated 1.2 million. That's a lot. The siege cannon is 366,000. So I'm going with this one. So now that we uh, are st uh, uh, have started somewhere, uh, and actually we started at uh, the thing that was uh, our driving point on this slasher. It was doing damage on long range. So we start with the weapons. Then uh, I would go to the charges, and if, you, if I go to charges and press the weapon, which I have uh, fitted, I will get the ammunition which is suit, uh, suited for this kind of weapon. And before I choose any one of those, I want to open the market, just for convenience, because if you go to projectile ammo, standard and small, you get all uh, armors, uh, ammunitions lift, lifted, uh, listed, and you see the benefits from them so well, let me let us see we have a fall of range within 21 kilometers and an optimal range within uh, 13 kilo kilometers so that's not bad at all so our range is already good uh, we don't need to increase our range in any kind so something like this carbonite a carbonized lead s which increase uh, the optimal range by 16 percent is not necessarily necessarily uh, needed for us right now because if an ammunition type has increased range, it normally has decreased uh, damage. So I want to go for something else. Like this depleted uranium has no range increase. So he should be good with damage. The EMPS has 50% reduced optimal range. That means he's going to do a lot of damage, but we will lose a lot of range. Let's skip this one. Then we have another Fusion S. Nuclear S has increased optimal range. And as you can see, we have Proton S, which has also increased optimal range. And Titanium uh, Sabot S, which has increased tracking speed, like our depleted uranium. So open this up. 
and as we should be able to see the depleted uranium actually does a little bit more base shield damage and the titanium subat does a little bit more base armor damage and on damage type you can see that the depleted uranium is actually spreading quite quite a lot and uh, the damage on the titanium subot is more on kinetic so what do we need to consider here right now too if you are doing uh, missions for a specific uh, corporation uh, you will see in the mission uh, descriptions against whom you're fighting like Gurista, Angel Cartel, Blood Raider you will see that and if you look uh, those guys up in uni uh, wiki you will see uh, which weakness their ships have like uh, if I remember correct Goristas should be weak against ki uh, kinetic damage so titanium uh, sabot would do more damage to them and <clears throat> you will also see what kind of damage they do so uh, if I remember correctly Goristas are weak against kinetic damage and they do kinetic damage so it would be wise to up your resistance in kinetic but um, that's that's for something more detailed and later on I'm just pointing it out here so that everyone knows that's not uh, that there are that there are more criteria on which you can choose and because I don't care about that right now I'm just going with the depleted uranium oh no wait before I do that let's look at the money Depleted uranium <coughs> is near to 19 and titanium sabot is actually cheaper. So let's go with that instead. Because as a beginner alpha clone you don't have that much money. So I'm putting in this guys. And as you can see now we have a DPS of 30.3 and an alpha of 286 which is not bad. So now, and as I was saying, I'm building to uh, fit around the damage. The next thing I want to do <coughs> for more damage is I want to get gyro stabilizer. This will increase. Let me open the description of this boy, bad boy. This will increase the damage modifier and the rate of fire bonus. So we're firing faster, and we're doing with each hit more damage. And because we don't want to buy the Tech 2 variants because I can't use them either. That's an alt character of me <coughs> and he is not good enough to use the, those guns either. So I'm looking here and I see counterbalanced. Looks not so bad and if you watch closely, if I'm on Gyro Stabilizer 1, you see CPU and Power Grid in the red. It tells you how much will be left if you put this item on your ship and if I move one down you see I will have more CPU left if I go with counterba counterbalanced compact gyro stabilizer and if I open both of these guys we can compare them and as you can see the counterbalanced compact gyro stabilizer does a little bit more damage and has a higher rate of fire bonus and if I go on fitting you also see he doesn't need that much CPU and why do I tell you this guys because it will always be a tight fit on your ship so you have to uh, look out at stuff like this so that you get can squeeze it as much CPU out uh, of your ship as, as possible <coughs> so I'm taking this two guys so normally you would put uh, some kind of propul a propulsion uh, on your ship to get faster but our ship is already close to 500 and I don't need to get close to enemies I don't I will skip on propulsion on this type of ship what I wanna go instead is <coughs> I wanna increase our shield resistance and I actually don't want to increase any specific amount of uh, shield resistance that's why I'm going with an adaptive shield hardener and here I will get as you can see the limited adaptive invulnerability uses less CPU and has the same amount 
uh, of resistance. <clears throat> that you can see that very clearly on the right on the defense tab, where it shows the uh, letters in green, what's going to increase. So I'm going with this one. And what I like to do on uh, ships, ship types uh, of this kind is, uh, I want to go on a buffer shield tank. What does that mean? That means I have now 400 HP of shield. We are going to increase this tremendously. Let's go on shield extenders. We have a small ship. We should probably fit a small one. Let's see if we can fit a medium one. Now you see we have... We don't have enough power grid for this. I'm going to small. And now I'm comparing all of them with each other. These two increase the same amount to 920. The FS9 Regolith Compact doesn't need that much CPU, but he is increasing our signature radius. So. If I go with this one, because increased signature radius means more damage from bigger ships, I'm going with the slow, uh, the this one and see if I can get this fitted. So as you can see, we are at negative 3.4, so we can't run every bit of this fit. So let let me just put those out again. If I put three of this one in, you can see now it's working. But, if we fit two of the other ones again, we are really close. We only increased our signature radius by 2 meters and are close to 2000 HP shield. This looks very good. And this ship would be uh, costing around 2 million right now. <clears throat> Actually, this should already be enough to fly those uh, level 1 missions uh, without any real problem but what we else can do is you go to rigs go to shield rigs then we have here a lot of shield rigs that we can use we have here uh, some rigs that increases your shield resistance like EM, explosive, kinetic, thermal uh, so it you could uh, decide here that you will only be doing uh, missions for Kaldari and you will mostly get uh, Gurista enemies if I'm correct so it could be wise to get one kinetic screen reinforcer here but what I wanted to, to, to do right now is I want more HP for my shield so I have two options uh, I have actually one option for uh, doing that and that would be the field extender what you can do else is you could get a field pur uh, purger that does not increase your st uh, shield strength but what it does is as you can see uh, on the fitting screen it increases uh, the shield recharge rate to 12 HP per second. The field extender does only increase to 11 HP per second but it increases our shield capacity and it, it, and it increases our signature radius but that's not uh, so bad right now. So let's fit three of these guys in this. So and as you can see now, we are close to 3000 HP. That's not really bad. We are doing 32 DPS and have an alpha of 310. So that's one example. This will work, a uh, uh, similar approach of this will work for, for Kaldari too. Uh, because they have very good ships with a shield and they have two rail guns and missiles so you can do definitely this on Amar Amar gets a lot of uh, low slots so you will be able to squeeze in your armor tank and some uh, damage modifier so you should be fine with Amar on doing that on Galente um, yeah, on Galente, that's, that's another story. Um, you could do that, but what you can also do is fit shield, buffered shield tank on, on Galente ship. A lot of people will cry now, but let me tell you, it's still working out, so there is no reason not to do it. So why not? If you have Galente 
and you try uh, in the simulator you, fitting and you see that you could use this one for your own for yourself then just go with it no one no one can stop you okay some gankers on a gate could stop you but they don't uh, they have bigger fish to fry okay so that that is the slasher but what i want to also do is i want to show you this with the breacher also i want you to remind uh, that, that we are close to 3000 hp buffer and to 42 dps so now i am doing this a little bit faster because i don't need to explain everything again just pointing out stuff the arbalest uh, launchers are the, the best meta i would always go with them they are uh, some kind uh, they are not so cheap but i still would go with them so charges let's take okay i'm probably going to fly against goristas i'm going to get the scorch missiles then i need to increase the dps for further that's quite expensive the crosslink go with the default one okay and um as you progress on your fitting, uh, you will get sometimes to a point where your fit does not fit because you don't have uh, enough CPU. You could uh, go back a little bit and uh, get rid of one uh, ballistic control system, for example, and put something else in it, like a hull upgrade so that your ship aligns and moves faster. So you have to tweak uh, at the end your ship to get everything uh, working. So, okay, I don't want, yeah, 490, so I don't want any propulsion on this ship either. Going to shield, I'm also going to adaptive. Let's get this one. Then I want to get shield extender as well. Let's see if we can make this. As, as you can see, I can't fit those two guys in. Can I fit three of this one? No, I can't fit three of this one. So now you see, I don't have enough CPU. So I'm go I'm I probably need to leave this this one out, and I'm still at 30.8 DPS. So it's still good damage. I'm not uh, missing on anything out. But let me think what we should use as the last low slot. Maybe we could get the damage control. But that's also costing a lot of CPU. But actually this would fit. This would fit nicely. And as you see, damage control increases all your resistances. So that's definitely nice to get. So just check. Let's check back on our shield extenders. Which one do we have? FS9. We have 2.3. Let's check how much the difference is. That's 20, that's 16, that would be 4 CPU of difference. That means we will not be able to fit any of those guys in. So we don't need we don't even need to try. So this fitting looks very good so far. Let's go for field extender again. And as you can see, we are at 3200 HP of shield buffer and 16 HP per second of shield recharge rate. And if I remember correctly, uh, the Punisher, Nama Frigate, with an armor repairer, uh, Tech 2, is close to 24 or 25 HP per second on armor repair. He will have more resistance, but we have a huge... Uh, a huge buffer of shield and have shield recharge on it so we should be pretty fine and we actually can get drones into ship too so I want to get the warrior they do not the most damage but they are the fastest the fastest so I'm just going to get them as backup let's save the ship as well as you can see, uh, it counts our drone's DPS uh, to the ship too, 
so we are doing quite a lot of DPS with the ship and I would be at 3.9 million loud uh, uh, from the uh, from the simulator let's say by, by all I'm in Jita let's see how much it will cost me in Jita it will cost me about 5.1 million but in this ship I should be able to do uh, missions quite fast so let me just buy this one so I'm now going to fit the ship and I'm then uh, showing you some missions in this sh uh, ship So I arrived at the station where I will, will go uh, to get my first mission for Kaldari Navy but I wanted just to show what you can also do with your turrets. Right now I have three uh, missile launcher uh, up here and I would uh, outside in space uh, w uh, would have to activate all three of them to shoot with all three of them. What you actually can do is when you hold the shift button and take one of this launcher onto the other one you will see a little one so now we have a weapon group one and when i do this this again <coughs> holding shift getting the third one onto the second now all three are in one group so they are uh, like they are uh, playing like one big launcher but, but will still need uh, to use the same ammunition so we get our scourges in so now we only need to activate this once and don't need to bother with three of them. So let's ask her about a mission. As you can see, Kaldari, I am getting a mission for uh, against Gorista and it's in Vesto. Let's set destination to there. Ship restriction, we have ship restrictions. And as you can see, we, al we also could use destroyers, but let's start with uh, frigates first. Destroyers will be another chapter, guys. So, intercept the personal transport ship, destroy its gu guards, and bring the militants to your agent. Ten militants. Okay. So, right now we are warping into the encounter. <clears throat> As you can see, I already activated my shield hardener. You should uh, have done that too by now. And our missiles go have a maximal flight range of 29 kilometers, so we should be really fine. As I start uh, starting to lock everyone, I'm already telling them to shoot uh, at enemy. Let's see, this should go pretty fast. As you can see, that was one hit. This was very close to one hit. And I already can close into the next acceleration gate and more enemies are spawning so starting to lock them up as well but as you can see mostly it's one hit right now As you can see, these enemies are really a piece of cake. And actually, for the beginning, you don't really need uh, the rigs for shield extender. Because they are a little bit expensive. So you can, you could uh, actually miss out on this one first. And do some missions to get the money. So, and I can now jump to the second pocket. While we're on the way, we can tell him to reload our missiles. <coughs> We don't need to uh, finish them because then they will be empty mid fight. When we are moving somewhere, we can all uh, already tell them to reload it. And actually, I should get rid of this large thing. So, so 
they are both in weapon range, so I'm just going to start firing. And uh, make sure I'm going to be sitting still. You don't normally you don't want to sit like a duck, but I'm just uh, going as uh, a showcase that our tank is pretty uh, neat. One ship down, second ship will be down soon too, and we need to pick up from a small container. I think the militants. Actually, they should warp in first. Okay, see the, the enemy didn't even make it close enough. So now we can see the enemy uh, or the target. This personal transport has the militants in it and this is his uh, guards. So we are going to kill them all right now. And as you can see it will take me like 5 minutes to do this mission. And it's pretty fast and it's uh, pretty uh, risk free. So you guys could uh, do this <coughs> without uh, any real problems. This is uh, even a good way to earn the money from uh, to earn the money. So you can uh, uh, do the the other guide that I did on ninja gas harvesting because you need 24 million for the skill book. So this would be one way to get the money. And I'm stopping right now because I don't need to close f in further. What you could also do is select your uh, the, t um, the personal transporter and tell him that you want to keep away 25 kilometers so that your ship will always try to be at this distance to the uh, to the ship. So we are doing fine, no problem at all. <coughs> We can see the missile turrets. Back in the old days, guys, there wasn't any missile turrets. The missiles would just start from the middle of the ship. <coughs> I think it was like three years ago, four years ago, where they actually added those missile launchers. So I'm telling my ship now to close in on the personal transporter because all the guards are dead and we are still at 100% shield capacity. So, no problems at all. Oh, someone closed in on us. Yes, let's just kill him. And what I wanted to point out as well is um, <coughs> the little difference between missile turrets and normal turrets, like uh, projectile turrets. The difference is <coughs> it is possible to miss the enemy if you're projectile turrets or laser turrets or railgun blaster turrets. You can miss the enemy. Uh, missiles always do damage. It depends on the signature radius and the speed of the enemy. How much damage you will do. But you will always do damage. So we are going to bump this personal transporter just for the fun. Because why not? It has really nice damage models now, this game also. That was not the case back <laughs> in the old days. And as you can see, the ship already looks pretty damaged and is close to being destroyed. I think one more should do the trick. And yes, let's watch it, a nice explosion. Very nice. So let us get our militants and just head back. So we are back at the station <coughs> and are completing the mission. And as you can see, that was like, yeah, 150,000 in like five minutes. So here's again our slasher fit. I'm just going to do another mission with this one, just to show uh, the difference. Actually, I'm getting quite the same mission here, but this time it will be Blood Raiders. And while I'm while I unduck, I can show you 
uh, that we also got 100,000 bounty, so you will net something around 250,000 on the lowest missions that you that you will get. You will normally get uh, better paying ones. So we are just warping in to the enemies. And we have the range about 32 kilometers, which is good enough. And actually, we already have some destroyers here. These guys will do tremendous amount of damage, and hopefully, we will be able to uh, tank that damage. The only downside that we have right now with this slasher is uh, his targeting range is pretty bad. So actually we should actually skill that one or fit a module for that. Or even go close close uh, combat. Uh, with this I mean auto cannons and not uh, artillery cannons. But let's just do this one right now. As you can see, we are doing pretty good damage to this destroyer class. And I am uh, sitting like a duck here on purpose, guys. Normally you would move, and because of your uh, move and your trajectory speed to the other um, enemies, you would get less damage. I'm just uh, doing this on purpose to get more damage to see uh, to which point our shield capacities can hold. And right now it looks pretty good. Let's take out this frigate which is close and he is nearly one shotted. As you can see, no problems at all. This destroyer is coming pretty close. As you can see, it's going up and uh, down our shield because our passive shield regeneration is kicking f in from the beginning and it does not cost us any capacitor so this is pretty passive and that's why our uh, ship is kept stable. And I'm uh, going to get rid of the destroyers first because they are doing the most damage. I am not so worried about the frigates because their damage uh, will not be very high. And actually you can see Corpy Templar is doing a lot of damage right now. 38, 30, uh, 43 and that's this destroyer. All the other, uh, all the other uh, NPCs are doing 4, 9, 5, 6. So that's, that's not really a big deal. And as you can see, I'm shooting down the last destroyer. We are still at more than half our shield and it should get better after this destroyer is gone. So the last destroyer just exploded, we are still nearly at half. I'm just going to reload now because I have one uh, shot left. That's not going to do much. And as next I'm going to focus on the frigates which should uh, die pretty fast. And even now uh, I'm st standing still and th they are orbiting me so that means uh, our hit chance should be bad, but I'm still pretty good at hitting them. 
even um, even my skills are not so good so uh, better skills will definitely benefit you here I will uh, talk ab uh, about that in the conclusions As you guys can still see, I am still standing here, not moving one inch. Um, our shield is holding up right now. We are not losing any more shield power, and the enemies are dropping like like flies. So this this is really a piece of cake. And you saw it with the breacher. You saw it. You see it now with the slasher. So both are viable. Uh, you can do this with the Caldari ships. Uh, the one would be Kestrel. And the other one would be the Merlin. Pretty easy too. Even you can you can even use the Condor. On Amar, I will show after this mission uh, possible Amar and Galentefit. But of course, I won't get the um, the correct DPS uh, shown on the on the simulation in the simulation mode of the fitting window because I don't I don't have the skills for them. So, enemy ships are actually gone, only these little babies are flying around. So let's take care of them. And as you can see, our ship is all, uh, our shields are already at 60% right now, and they are going up. So we lost nearly half of our shield capacity under all this fire while we were s s standing still. If we would have moved and orbited like the like a personal transporter, uh, we would uh, got a lot less uh, hit from the enemies and would uh, have a lot more shield power left. But as I was telling you already, maybe the breacher will do a better job of, uh, in long range because he has a longer uh, targeting range. In this slasher. We will uh, either need better skills or go close combat. But as you can see, even in this guy, um, we still do pretty pretty good. And you can even account for that that you are that you can't target that far. That would mean you could directly choose um, ammunition, which does not have that that good of an optimal range, so that you do more DPS with that am uh, ammunition kind. So I'm actually killing the last personal transporter right now. I actually want to get a little closer to him. And then we should get the next people. And should be able to finish this mission. Let's bump him like r real quick. As you can see, even in the slasher, this was a piece of cake. This blood render design uh, looks looks somehow cool, I think. And because we are st standing still, you see, oh, he all he did miss us really, really badly. Now he's exploding again, just taking the militants out of it. It was ten, if I remember correctly, right? Not twenty. It's ten. It's ten. Okay, good, good. So I'm moving. Warping out the system to my agent again, and as you can see, our shield is nearly, uh, nearly full again. So that's that's just easy going for level one missions. You should be good on the way. You should have actually you know, no real problems. Um, 
if a site is getting a bit difficulter, you have to prioritize targets like I did right now. Though if I would have left those destroyers to the as last, they maybe would have done a lot more damage. But as you saw in the locks uh, while fighting, it will show you the damage that you receive from the from the enemies. And if you're looking fast enough, you can uh, read his name and lock them first and get them down first. So it will be easier for you to, ta to, to tank all the damage. So now we're back. Just talking with the agent. <coughs> Getting something uh, similar as amount. 180,000. And I will again probably get like 100,000 as bounty. So that's not bad at all. So, and with that said, let me just watch. I should have prepared some showcases. Let's see. We have, for example, the Punisher. I can't fly that with this guy because I don't have. I, this is an Alpha clone. I'm showcasing this all with an Alpha clone. This would uh, be uh, a Punisher build, it does a lot of DPS. 18 DPS has uh, beam lasers in it with uh, have an optimal range of 13 kilometers which is pretty good has an afterburner it's in civilian because of CPU constraints but still uh, good enough if you leave everything running you will have uh, two minutes of capacitor but you normally don't need everything you will uh, you can shut down the Afterburner when you don't need it, you can shut down the repairer if you, if you don't need it and save your capacitor. And you should be really fine with this ship too. We have even more resistance with this ship. The only downside is we don't have a buffer tank. Next one is the Atron that I prepared as a showcase. As you can see, even in an Atron Galante ship, we can easily go over 2000 uh, shield HP with uh, good kinetic and explosive damage resistance on shields and still do uh, 33 DPS on rail guns, which will have uh, uh, at least 15 kilometers of optimal range. And they do also a lot of kinetic damage, which would be good against Goristas. So guys, let's talk about skills. For all four races, uh, you can use gunnery skills. Missiles work only on Kaldari and Minmatar ships. And drones are uh, more suited for Amar and Galente ships. So if you... Um, want to use turrets you should get uh, some more skills in gunnery like rapid firings gunnery motion prediction and sharpshoot and you should probably skill those more um, onto higher levels and uh, if you are using Amar Galente or Kaldari uh, weapons, which would uh, be laser and uh, hybrid weapons. You should also train controlled burst because it will decrease the needed amount of capacitor that the weapons use up. For Minmatar that's not a problem because Minmatar projectile weapons don't use capacitor at all, so you don't need this skill. Everything else will increase um, your your hit, uh, your, your, uh, hit chances with turrets your rate of fire, then small projectile turret will uh, uh, increase your damage. So that, that these are all, all skills that you will need. This is the same with missiles. Uh, first of all, you have a lot of different missile types that you can skill, and each missiles, uh, missile type will do increased damage with that kind of missiles. Like when I have light missiles here, that those will increase the damage that light missiles do, and heavy assault missiles will increase the damage that heavy assault missiles do. But still we have uh, missile launch operations which increase the rate of fire of all missile launchers and the rapid la launch increases also the rate of fire of all missile launchers. 
and target navigation prediction, missile bombardment, missile projection all increase um, like flight time, uh, flight speed and, the, and the, the projection even in, uh, decreases or increases. Let me let me just read it out. Enhanced guide missile ignition system 10% bonus to all missile maximum veloci velocity. That increases the speed. Navigation prediction 10% decrease per level in factor of target's velocity for all missiles. Your, your missiles have an uh, explosion velocity and when the enemy ship is flying literally flying faster than the explosion velocity he will not get full damage but if you scale target navigation prediction um, this will negate the effect of the it will not, not negate uh, it completely but it will decrease the effect of the speed of the target so that your missiles will do more damage and for Amar and Galente you will have more uh, drone skills and this looks uh, the similar you have here drone sh uh, drone sharpshooting you have drone interfacing drone uh, avionics drone durability drone navigation and this will all increase your performance with your drones I even would uh, suggest to stick uh, to something for the beginning like uh, when you're Kaldari you don't really have the drone skills and uh, Kaldari and Minmatar both have ships beginning from frigate to cruiser which are dedicated uh, turret ships or missile launcher ships. Let me just show it to you so you can decide on one route and stick with it so that you don't need to skill uh, everything right now and can uh, skill something else. So let's go to ships. Let me show you Kaldari first. We have, for example, Kestrel, which is only missiles. That would be the frigate. This Kestrel is pretty good. Then we would go to Destroyer. And the Kaldari also have the Corax, which is an only missile destroyer. So, if you skill your missiles completely and you do your level 1 missions and you've you, you done uh, a lot and have gained some money and you want to up the game a little bit, you can get the Corax. Then you only need to skill the skill for, for the Corax, but your weapon systems you don't need to skill anything because you can use those. And when we go to Cruisers... You can see when I take, go to Kaldari, we have the Karakal, which also is a completely uh, missile ship. You even can use rapid light missile launchers on a Karakal. Uh, just let me show you the equipment for that, because that uh, could be useful to know. You have a light missile launcher, which requires... the light missile skill and when you go on a rapid light missile launcher this one actually uses light missiles too but is a lot heavier when I go to fitting you will see it needs a lot more CPU and a lot more power grid but it is designed for cruiser sized ships so you are shooting a lot of light missiles you can use those on the Caracal so as I just showcased you can use the rapid light missile launchers directly with the light missile launcher skill and use it on a cruiser sized ship with no problems at all. Let me just open the rapid light missile launcher and you will see he only needs light missiles one. So that means you can uh, be in a frigate, skill all your missile launchers, skill the frigate skills, then uh, get the missile launcher skills as high as possible move on to a destroyer only need to skill destroyer then move on to a cruiser only need to skill cruiser and then you are in the cruiser and you will do viable damage with the cruiser sized uh, ship with rapid li uh, light missile launcher then you can switch over to heavy missile launchers anytime this is the route when you when you stick to missiles. The Kaldari also have um, turrets only ship, which would be the MOA. And uh, this 
type of line goes through both the Cormorant Destroyer of the Kaldari uses only hybrid turrets, so which uh, which way you choose doesn't uh, doesn't matter your your options. You will have a ship uh, for frigate, a ship for destroyer, and one ship uh, as in cruiser class that you can use with the skills with the with the weapon type of your favor. And just to showcase the Minmatars, we already saw the breacher, which was missiles. We have the Rifter and the Slasher, which is, which is projectile turrets. Then we can move up to Destroyer. And Minmata Destroyers, we have Talva, which is only missiles, and the Thrasher, which is, which is only uh, projectile turrets. And as, as of uh, Cruiser, we have the Rupture, we have the Stabber, both are only turrets, and we have the Bellicos, which is only missile launcher so you see you even can use those here too uh, Galente and Amar let's go to the destroyer to, to see the difference in both Galente has an only hybrid turret uh, destroyer the catalyst and the Algus which is also some hybrid turret but also drones when I open his information tab you can see he has a lot of drone bandwidth and a lot of drone capacity so we actually can use uh, two medium drones and three light drones to get a total of five drones and he will still be able to build <coughs> five small uh, small five small hybrid turrets as for the ama the same picture they have the coercer which is only turrets then they have the dragoon which is uh, drones but this time only 25 mbit uh, th this would mean five light drones and is capable of actually three turrets and three missiles so it's a mixed bag i also wanted to point out at uh, doing the missions when you are uh, really starting out uh, get the the cheapest parts for for a ship fitting like this and even uh, loot the wrecks in the missions because at least there will there you will get some um, modules and can hoard them uh, on the station just in case you need you need to fit new ships and need parts so that you have uh, so uh, uh, um, something to start with nice the length of the missions I did not cut them on purpose just because to showcase them uh, in full length to any beginner and alpha clone so that they can see uh, what I did over one mission so what is the conclusion of all this um, this is just a little insight to level 1 missions uh, which you can as alpha clone fly easily and securely without any problems I'm not saying this is the perfect way, I'm just saying this is another way that you can do it. If you don't like this, then do it another way. If you think you found a better way to do it, then do it that way. Share it with your friends, share it with everyone if you want. That's uh, the, good way, the good thing of Eve. Everyone can do it as he likes. No one is pushing anyone or telling uh, anyone that he has to do it that way. You can do it how you want it to do it, so no problem at all. So, if you have any questions, any advices or anything you want to tell me, just uh, put it below in the comments. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel for more stuff like this and hope to see you soon guys. Kiltech out.